He was born on the Canadian border in War Road, Minnesota. 1,500 hockey-crazy folks where he was introduced to the game as a sibling. We played road hockey with a taped up shoes can. I was five years old when my uh, older brothers and sisters came in the house because they needed a goalie and my mother dressed me up and, and uh, sent me out there and I stood in goal and I came in the house all welted up, black and blue, and, but I enjoyed the heck out of myself. What happened that day was nourished five years later when he won a youth sales contest that allowed him to cross the border to Winnipeg, Canada and watch Detroit play Toronto in an NHL game. It was the first time I actually saw the uniform in color. Changes Detroit, things, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Ch you know, changed uh, the whole perspective of the game and how huge the arena yeah. was. There was a star on the horizon, one that first lit up Minnesota when he led his team to a state high school tournament. Well, Henry was a tremendous talent, and looking at him in the state high school tournament, uh, he actually was as good a player as I've ever seen in the state that high school good, tournament. Huh? He was that good. What do you remember about playing the state hockey tournament? Well, I was overwhelmed just to be down here. We had very, very seldom come to any big city, uh, let alone play in front of 15, 16,000 people. He was fast tracking. The talk of the state earned a spot of the 1972 silver medal Olympic team. And eventually was drafted by the team he watched play his first professional game, the Detroit Red Wings. And tip right out in front. Here's a chance for Boucher. He scores! Henry Boucher. Who is this Henry <laughs> Boucher? Well, that one there is uh, certainly uh, uh, embarrassing right now. <laughs> <laughs> you were styling back then. I bet this was groovy then, huh? He would return to Minnesota for a dream come true, to play for the North Stars. Well, we were excited about Henry coming to the team for a couple of reasons. One, because he was a very good hockey player. He was going to help us on the ice. Uh, secondly, he was a local boy that was uh, an attraction, and at that time, we weren't drawn very well. So it was an added uh, incentive for people to come to the games, and, and we felt that having him on a team was uh, going to make us a better team. You know, I always wanted to come home and play with the North Stars, uh, but I, I felt that I wanted to play with my favorite team. I felt that I needed to prove myself in the National Hockey League. But coming back to Minnesota was, you know, absolutely special. Um, you know, I, I was enjoying every, every game. But his promising career ended in an instant. The night Boston's Dave Forbes used his stick as a weapon and took it to Boucher's face and eye. A puddle of blood told the story. I got popped pretty well with uh, uh, you know, with the butt of the stick, you know, and I knew I was, I was hurt, you know, at that time, but I didn't know to what extent. Uh, I was cut 30 with 30, 30 stitches over the eye and it blew my cheekbone out. The swelling was so massive that it took me over a week to, for my eye to open up. And then I knew that there was something wrong because the floor was, was not level. His career ended at the age of 25, and his life took a turn for the worse. There were times of, uh, you know, extreme depression. Uh, you live in that self-pity even after I, I went ahead and, and uh, retired from hockey when I was 25, and I went through a tremendous amount of uh, depression, uh, you know, self-pity. Where do I go from here? What do I do? Um, and it affected everybody around me. He healed through family support and the process reconnected with his culture, a culture dismissed by his generation in the late 60s. And when I, uh, when I was growing up, um, nobody wanted to be Indians because of the depiction of the movies during those times of, of Indians being stupid and drunk and ignorant. And, and I uh, didn't want to learn my language. I didn't want to learn my culture or traditions. It, uh, I think, you know, with family, uh, uh, later on in life when uh, Dennis Banks and those guys took over, wounded knee that, uh, you know, it made the Indians uh, 
stand up and take notice, and we were able to bring our culture and traditions back. He moved to Alaska in 2007, seeking a place where he could find peace in himself, and he found it. It's the absolute beauty and the stunning beauty of, of Alaska. You know, maybe I was looking for a place to, to, uh, to go and meditate and, and uh, looking for that mountaintop everybody looks for. While spending time in Alaska, he created an idea, a book and a documentary, to chronicle 21 Native Americans that have participated in the Olympics, a place to find pride. Now there's 21 of us. Um, I always felt that this series would be a tremendous uh, asset to, for all of us. That is what is important across the country. On reservations, they are reviving the heritage of their people, celebrating lives that had been forgotten. You know, we were, we were broken people. We, um, all of that, the clan system, the traditions and culture were taken away, but were never forgotten. We had to practice our stuff in the woods and away from the general public, but uh, now we can share the culture and the traditions and, and, and teach it. His life has come full circle, but you cannot help but think what could have been as a hockey player. He'd have been a, a tremendous player. He'd have been an excellent player. Whether he'd have been good enough to be an all-star, I'm not quite sure he, he was that level, but he was close to it. And that fateful night, he has made peace with it for his own sake. Through time and uh, through self-healing and getting back to my roots as a Native American and finding my spirituality, certainly uh, part of that is, is forgiving. So mm -hmm. It's a tough part of it, isn't it? Sure. So I, uh, over the years, have, have forgiven him, and, but I've never talked to him and he's never contacted me or our paths have never crossed. Life to the Max is brought to you by Life Touch, photography for a lifetime.